Hi guys, how's it going? Um, my name is Madison, welcome to my channel. If you've never been here before, I like to do mukbangs and cooking videos and sometimes like just things involving food, which is what's happening today. Um, so if that interests you, please go ahead and subscribe. Uh, like the video if you haven't already, because that really helps. Um, and please let me know if you have anything to say down below. Um, I just got mine from H-E-B and I wanted to show you guys what I got. And Mitzi is coughing because she's choking on her own hair. Um, anyways, so I just got back from H-E-B. Um, there was like so many coupons in the store today of things that I actually do use. So I was like, that's amazing. Um, so the first thing that I got is just some more of this artisano bread. Um, this is like the best bread ever. It's delicious. Um, this is one of the things that I had a coupon on. It is um, by a brand that I can't say, Ricanto maybe? Um, and it's Organo San Marzano Region Italian Diced Tomatoes. Um, so I was really excited about this because I think it's gonna taste good. It looks really good. Um, it was regularly like $3.99 on sale for, um, or like with a coupon it was $1.50 off. And then um, these were buy one get one free. It is just the red gold crushed tomatoes. They're like a dollar or something. Um, I got some cilantro and some green onions because I'm gonna also make a recipe on here today. Um, the other thing that was really exciting, I always look and see like when meat is like on sale. Um, so they had this 25% um, off um, ground chuck which whatever like it's just ground beef and it's just the 80 20 so this was 747 to begin with and since it was 25 percent off which thankfully the lady at the um thing she like at the self-checkout she came over she's like hey do you want me to put the 25 percent off i was like oh it's not automatic so it's not automatic so if you go through self-checkout make sure you're good on that um if you go to heb so it's 560 and there is almost two pounds it's 1.92 pounds in here so that's like perfect um this craft cheese was two for four dollars um which is really nice because even the heb cheese is two for five um and we use a lot of cheese now so um that's like on our list anyways i just got pepper jack and medium cheddar i already have sharp cheddar in the fridge which is why i got medium um these raspberries were on sale i was gonna buy some strawberries or like some kind of fruit but these were on sale for $1.98. Um, this is just the six ounce. Um, I got a can of dark red kidney beans because every time I need them, I don't have them. So I bought them. <laughs> and then um, I've never had canned green beans. This is the no salt added by Del Monte. These were on sale for like 98 cents. They're usually like more than that. I think it's like $1.27 or something. I just wanted to try it because I've never had it before. So I just wanted to try it and see how it goes. And then um, what I'm excited about today is like, so I kind of want to make some kimchi fries and I've never made them before, but I looked up a recipe and it was like marinating them with like this Asian pear, like mixed together with some other stuff. And um, so I got this pork ribeye roast. Um, and so I thought this would be really good for it. This was only 516, pork is like so cheap. Um, Cause this is almost two pounds, like, what? Crazy. I don't know if it's because of like the cut that it is or what, but all I know is I can make any cut of meat work for whatever. Like, I don't care. Um, but yeah, so um, I just want to show you guys my groceries. So for all of this stuff, it was, let me see here. What else is on here? Yeah, that's it. Um, for all of this, it was um, 29 and I saved $5. Um, and a lot of the reason for that is because, you know, there's like $10 for this meat right here. Um, and then for the cheese as well, that adds like a good amount of money. So it makes sense. So now I'm just going to put it in the fridge. I need to show you guys how I organize my fridge, but right now it's not really organized. I'm just putting stuff in. I'm kind of just like haphazardly throwing things in there at the moment. Okay, so I am gonna like look up the recipe that I was gonna use really quick and then I will come back and start like the marinating with you guys. Um, and then I'm gonna make some breakfast because I'm hungry. And I'm also just gonna show you guys like my pantry situation. So up here it's like pretty like random looking. As you can see, like there's some more tomatoes in here um, for recipes. 
I have some basil, um, pesto. There's a box of Pop-Tarts that's like half open. Um, I have some country gravy mix because this is like such an easy way to have that. And then on this shelf, I have all of the Ziploc bags like organized here um, because especially when I worked for Amazon, I was always taking stuff and so it was easier. Um, and then I just have most of my cans on this. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my crushed tomatoes. I'm actually gonna put them up here since they belong there. Because I use this stuff for like different recipes. I'm also gonna put this in here. Let me see. I wanna put this right here, probably under this. And I always check like the dates whenever um, I do this, so no worries there. And then I'll put these here. I just have um, some pumpkin puree back there, some corn, more corn here. Um, Brandon wanted me to get this. I need to make that for him. Um, and then I have this really cool shelf where I can like have ramen. Um, so this is like super helpful. This is also from when I worked at Amazon. <laughs> and then um, I just have like some random like sauces. This is so good. I really wish that they would, this looks like a hole, but it's not. I really wish that they would bring this back because it's delicious. And then this guy, I'm also just gonna put in here without knocking anything over. As you can see, things have been getting a little crazy. So I need to um, like move some stuff around, but it's actually not that bad up here. I know exactly what's in here. So that's helpful. All right, so I am just hitting some garlic here so I can open up the skin and take the garlic clove out. I ended up using like eight or nine little garlic cloves. Um, the recipe called for, I think like six, four or six. And since these are so small, I was like, eh, I'll just put them all in. It was like the end of the, it was the end of the garlic. So I was like, eh, and this is me showing you one of them in just a second. <laughs> little cute garlic clove and then I just broke it in half I just try to make it as easy as possible on the blender this blender is really like good for what it is it's an oster um, but I just try to help it out as much as I can um, and then I'm almost done putting all the garlic in there and then I was being silly because it was really hard to get the rest of the skin off because there was so much skin stuck to my fingers so I had to go rinse off real quick and then now I'm just going to chop up this onion. Um, I didn't chop up this onion like with safety measures in mind. I don't know what was going through my brain. But when I watched this video over, I was like, what am I doing? So instead of doing exactly this, considering that I'm going to cut off the root anyways, just cut off the end and then the root, set the onion, you know, like down on one side like I had, cut it in half, take the skin off and then chop it into some pieces what I'm doing here is like just making my life a little more difficult. I don't know why I was being so extra. Like seriously, like why did I, why? <laughs> like I have no idea why I did that. And then I like went to cut the root off. Like it was so silly. And then right here I realized I was like, why did I leave the root on there? So I took it off, went to cut a little bit. My um, cutting board was moving. And so I was like, okay, like your cutting board's moving. What are you doing? <laughs> but I got through it. I got through it. And now I just have the Asian pear. Um, and it didn't say whether or not to skin it. So I left it on. I noticed there was a brown spot in here. I went ahead and just cut it out really quick. Um, and uh, that way it'll, you know, not be in the final thing. I didn't know if it was like bitter if it had that brown spot or what. But I didn't want to take any chances. And now I'm just cutting around this seed situation this looks more dangerous than it actually was at the time so pretty much the entire thing here was just remove the um meat from the seed what was really weird about this portion of it is i got this from one recipe and when i went to go to the other recipe i was looking at it didn't have a pear so i was like why did this other person use an asian pear and because the second person's recipe that I used, the uh, dandy one, hers was much more authentic. Oh, here's me taking a small bite. <laughs> 
Anyways, so in regard to, like, authenticity, I'm not really sure exactly what was going on here because, um, like, Dandy's was much more authentic to the actual restaurant, like, in, like, how her recipe was. I was just showing you guys to put the skin down. With this particular pair, it doesn't matter if you put the skin down or not because the skin is very rough on the outside. Um, but with things like bell peppers, it's nice to cut it from the inside instead of from the outside because bell peppers are so slick. So that's definitely a tip. Anyways, so I don't know. I don't know how much of the pear actually like gave in this recipe. I feel like maybe just using brown sugar would have sufficed. That's what Dandy used as like her sweetener. So I'm not really sure. I think there was sugar in this recipe, but I think the pear was unnecessary. I definitely want to know what you guys think though. Think about that though. So let me know. Um, here I am just prepping out the meat. I understand that some people like wash their meat bef like when it comes out of a container like this, but this meat was honestly like super super clean. Like there was nothing on this. Um, it wasn't slimy. Like nothing was going on. So I felt like super safe. Here I was making a game plan of like how to cut it up. Um, and I'm just using the sharpest knife that I have apart from a fillet knife, which during this, I kind of wondered, I was like, hmm, should I use my fillet knife? But it was fine with this one. Um, to make the meat not like spread around as much, it might have been good to lay down a paper towel under the meat, but it was okay. And I'm just using a glass cutting board to prevent like, or, you know, lessen any cross contamination. And what I like to do whenever I'm actually using my hands for stuff like this, I went ahead and put a napkin on the sink faucet on the hot side. And I put a dab of soap like in the sink so I can turn the hot water on and grab the soap like with my fingers and just start like that. That way I don't have to touch anything when I have like super porky hands. And of course, like I'm going to sanitize it after that, but... That just helps me feel better about everything, getting in, like, little crevices. Um, and here, I ended up just separating the light meat and the dark meat because I figured out that there was a difference here. Um, and I highly recommend getting as dark of meat as possible for the pork here. I mean, you could use chicken, too. Um, but that dark meat was amazing. Like, this and here, right here, I was like, oh, like, let me go ahead and separate it. So I went ahead and just kind of, in a way, like, filleted the, the middle here. Um, and that's me just separating it because there was like a fat, like ligament area, um, in between the light and the dark. So I went ahead and just started, um, cutting up the rest of the, the light meat here, um, which was still really good. Um, I think I was cutting this in like a, maybe a quarter of an inch, sometimes less than that. And then here I'm separating that fatty part I was telling you about, but it's not just fat. It was like. It reminded me of like the back of um, like a baby back rib. I know that's not an amazing way to cut something right there, but you know, it is what it is. I was just trying to get this done, honestly. Um, but yeah, I felt like the, the silver skin on the, on the ribs. And what I did here, so at the beginning I was throwing away the excess like on the tray over there. And I should have just continued doing that because once I added all of the ingredients in this bowl, everything got mixed together. So then I had to like separate it out because I was going to use it to like render some of the pork fat and then cook it in it. I didn't do that. So if you want to render it out, by all means do that. Just don't do what I did and put it together because it was, it was really frustrating, like separating it all later, like not in like a terrible way, but I was like, oh my gosh, I was like, why did I even do that? So I got the rest of this little uh, skin off. I like was being really funny with like the meat because I ended up cutting off this little bitty piece, but we ate all of it, so um, this meat turned out really good, honestly. Um, and then here I am just making those final cuts. You want to keep cutting against the grain. Make sure you don't lose where the grain is um, when you're separating if you end up using this cut of meat. Um, I really like this cut of meat. I can't believe it was so inexpensive for what we got. And here's all the ingredients. I'm just putting this on like a chop setting here. Um, so that way everything can get like nice and pureed and smooth. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to be like pretty much mixed up. I also added in maybe an eighth of a cup of water. So just a little bit, just to make sure that everything was really smooth in there. So, um, 
like I said, not too smooth, but just smooth, like easy. Um, I love this blender. It was like 20 bucks at Walmart. It's amazing. Um, and here I'm just going to go ahead and pour all those ingredients over the pork. Again, let me know how you guys like these voiceovers. It's, it's definitely easier for me to do this because I get so distracted whenever I start, um, like talking about it while I'm doing it here. I'm just like mixing it together. Just make sure it's touching all the pork. That's the main, that's the main thing here. If you leave it over three hours, mix it together, like, you know, halfway through, uh, if you're going to bed, mix it before you go to bed. Um, or like in the morning when you wake up and I did spill some, but I cleaned it. Okay guys. So I'm just going to kneel down really quick so you can see what I'm doing. But, um, I have that bowl here and it just says to marinate three hours to overnight. So I'm just placing some plastic wrap. And I'm just gonna stick it in the fridge. It just kind of reminds me of like applesauce, but it's like savory, sweet pear sauce. <laughs> so this is gonna go in the fridge for the next three hours. Okay guys, so um, Brandon wants an egg sandwich. I think I'll make one too. Um, I'm kind of disappointed because I don't have any bacon and I usually like bacon on egg sandwiches. What can you do? Okay, so um, I just have like a 12 or 14 inch pan here. I'm gonna put it on medium high heat. And then for the egg pan, um, it's just like this little like six inch one or whatever it is. Um, I'm also gonna put this on like a medium high but a little bit lower. So if you have like an electric one, um, this one is on uh, like seven and then this one is almost up to eight. Um, I just have some butter. And it's too hard for that. So I'm just gonna put some butter in this pan, which I would use bacon grease if I had some, but I don't. And then um, in this pan over here as well, I'm gonna put some butter. And then the other things I have are some spicy mayo that I made and um, some sloppy mama because it tastes really good on there. And I'm just getting four pieces of bread out. Sometimes I'll make um, like hash browns or tater tots or something to go with it, but um, I don't think we really need it today because I'm making that pork later. So we just need something to like hold us until then. So I'm just spreading this butter around this pan. And then all I'm gonna do is just dip it in there and then flip it over. So that one side already has butter. You can't really see it, but I'm just dipping it in here and then flipping it over like that. Um, I don't think I can fit that other one. Let me see. Yeah, it's fine. I'll just use some of the butter that's in this one. Ouch. Okay, there we go. So this can kind of toast up a little bit. And you want it to be pretty hot whenever you put them in there because it'll make it where they spread less. And so, I mean, they're gonna spread their freaking eggs. So, just a little bit of salt. I need to do some more freshly cracked pepper, but I'll just do some regular. Oh, yeah. And I'm also gonna put some chives on Brandon's because I don't have any onions right now. And just make sure you check your bread because it can happen very quick. So this is what they're looking like right now. And they're easily to move around the pan.
Oops. I really need a different spatula. I've been wanting to get one forever and I just haven't. So, whoa. And these are just gonna be like kinda over easy, over medium, about around there. You can kind of like press it, make sure. And I just put the really toasted side like on the inside. And then whenever I put them um, on the plate, which you can't really see because it's super white right now, um, I make sure that each yolk is like opposite of each other. pretty hot so I'm just setting it over to the side for just a second. And then um, this is Brandon, so I'm just gonna put some Slappy Mama, some of these chives, which I know they're dry, but they'll still be good for him. And then some of this mayo. And this is actually sriracha mayo. Usually I just make a spicy mayo um, with like hot sauce and stuff, but sriracha mayo will be good too. move Brandon to a paper plate so I can bring it to him in just a second. And then for these. Okay, so I just have mine. I took Brandon's, I took Brandon his because he's playing a game right now. Um, and you just wanna be careful whenever you bite into these if you've never had a fried egg sandwich before because if they just came out, like it'll be super hot and you will burn yourself. So I know mine is kind of boring, but it's, it's still egg, you know? I've never had sriracha mayo um, on egg sandwich. That's actually really good. So 
super hot. And it's super nice with this bread because there's a little bit of crispy on it, but it's still pretty soft. So everything like just goes nicely together and the egg can soak up like into the bread. Mm. It's also really good if you put like sauteed onions on it. Mm. The egg yolk is like super jammy. It's perfect. I just have egg white right now. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Super hot. It's just so pretty. This is actually a really good last bite. Is it good? Good. I'm just filming like me eating it. How's it going? I'm chilling. How's that sandwich? Mm, it's yummy. Delicious. <laughs> what? It was good. Yeah, it's yummy. Heck yeah. There's all your Hot Wheels. Move that arm. Can you take a bite real quick? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, say bye. Bye. <laughs> okay, guys, so I'm just making an edit to my video really quick. I went ahead and added some gochujang to the pork to let it marinate because I read another recipe and it was with gochujang and that actually makes sense. So I went ahead and put in two tablespoons of that and um, mix it together. Okay guys, so the moment is here. Um, I have my kimchi. This is one that I just got from um, 
H Mart. It is the one that says um, Do San Food. Um, so I'm gonna use that one. And then I have um, cilantro here. I have some green onions that I'm gonna chop up in just a second. And then I just have the pork over here. And um, what I like to do is take a Walmart bag and just like hang it on one of my drawers and then close the drawer so that I have like a super easy trash can. I'm just gonna show you guys really quick. So it's just right here. Sorry about the camera movement. And I use that so that it's easy for me to um, like throw things away when I don't need them. So I'm just gonna use some regular cooking spray really quick in here. take those pieces out and kind of like dry them a little bit I looked up another recipe and that's why I added the gochujang I think that's just like a piece of okay so this is definitely gonna be super hot um, I'm gonna go ahead and place this in here and I'm just gonna do like the thickest pieces first And while this is cooking, I'm just going to chop up the um, other items. Could you please get that? Mm -hmm. And this is the part that has most of the flavor, so... Some cilantro.
Okay, so here I have some peanut oil heating up. Um, I have like the first batch of pork here. I'm gonna go ahead and take this out. Whenever you cut the pork so thin, it doesn't take very much time at all, so. And I'm just using these because they seem like they would be really good in this. That's crazy. They don't have frying instructions on here anymore. That's wild. That was crazy. Well, usually fries are just like three minutes, so I'll go ahead and do that. Um, and I'll do it to like 375. Like really surprised by that cool so that's heating up perfect i'm just taking a small pan so i can heat up the kimchi and then i just have spicy mayo which is sriracha and um mayonnaise mixed together and then um i also have some cheddar cheese And they actually usually use a little bit of extra sriracha like on there, so I'm gonna do that too. And then I was watching this other lady and her name is like, it's called like, I think Dan Dandy's Travel Kitchen. Um, and she, was just saying like how to um, get this part done. So you don't put any oil or anything, but you can put the juices. And then you just kind of let it hang out and do its thing. All right, let's look at this pork. Looks pretty good. I got um, a lot of like grill marks on it from the cast iron, so that's nice. This is good. Mm. And I'm just gonna cut it into like more manageable pieces. So most of the juice has um, cooked off of this. I'm just gonna leave it here so it can caramelize a bit. And this is almost ready, it's at like 340. All right. So my kimchi is good here, so I'm gonna go ahead and just put that back on the cutting board. And for their spicy pork, I think that they like rub it in something after it comes out because it's usually like a little bit more caramelized and sweet. Okay, let's see how it goes with these potatoes. 
I don't know why there's no fryer instructions on here. Like there, it's potatoes. Like what? Ugh, it's crazy. I just put it in this so that I can like lower them in there. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and take these out. I just have um, a bowl here with some paper towel. They took about three minutes, so. If you get those potatoes, or if you get potatoes that don't have frying instructions, that's what you do. And I'm not gonna salt these when they come out because it's kind of unnecessary with the ingredients that we're gonna be adding. Okay, so I have my fries. Just gonna add the cheese. And I'm just gonna lay this paper towel that I used um, on top so that the cheese will melt. And then I'm just gonna add the kimchi on top. And the pork. And then I'm gonna put the green onions on top and some cilantro. And then, like I said, they add a little bit extra of the sriracha on here. So I'm just gonna put a little extra. And if I had the spicy mayo in a um, squeeze container, I would do that, but I don't. So I'm just gonna do this. <laughs> Mitzi, I don't know who invited you in here. Out. Okay, look at it. It looks so beautiful, I'm so excited. Um, hopefully it is as tasty as it looks. I don't know why it wouldn't be, but you just never know. Here's like a bite. Let me put some green stuff on it. I don't think I have any kimchi, hold on. There we go. Wow. It might have taken a lot longer than just going down the street to cilantro, but it tastes almost exactly the same. Like, what? <sighs> if you never tried this before, it's like really savory. And then the like, it's kind of spicy because of the pork and the mayo. And then the kimchi is just such an, it, the flavor of it is so good whenever you cook it. Um, anyways, if you've never had this before, definitely try it out. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I really appreciate it. Uh, let me know if you make this. Um, Brandon wants to eat it. So um, I'm going to go and share it with him. Thanks so much, guys. Bye.